G'day there guys, it's Connie here again from Marky Industries and we are back with some more stories from Reddit. As always, if you enjoy these videos, be sure to hit like and subscribe and also the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Alrighty, let's get right into it. Alrighty folks, we're on Am I the A-Hole? This one was written by Throwaway Account, but the account's named Throwaway Da Ring Frodo, which I thought was important. Anyway, and it's titled, I'm not going to be the maid of honour for my sister's wedding because she's marrying my bully. Yeah, pretty much the title. This will be long because while God and her wisdom plagued me with empathy to the chest and a hell of a good ass, she forgot to bless me with the brevity. I lurk on subs like this all the time and see comments to long posts lamenting their wizened minds, having spent actual whole minutes voluntarily reading a long post, longing for those moments back. So, here's your warning. Don't be a twat waffle. Pass me over if you've not the time or desire to hear my tale of woe. I will rant. As you might notice, I'm the snarky one. I have four older brothers and one twin sister, Violet. She and I are both female, 31. We were an oops baby and then the WTF babies when mum found out her oops came with a spare. For all intents and purposes, I am the spare. My parents did want a girl. They wanted a girl. Big difference. Mum tells the story often that Violet came out quite easily, hardly any labour, but Lily was trouble the moment she was born. So over time, I was just like, hmm, effort. I'm the trouble, then I aim to misbehave. We're not identical, and Violet is absolutely beautiful, feminine, bright and bubbly. She's goddamn Jean Grey of the X-Men, practically. I'm more of Rogue, not the classic one, more like that cartoon reboot from the 2000s when they made them all teens, and Rogue was standoffish, self-sabotaging, and goth. I'm only goth on Tuesdays, but I did have a streak of time where I self-sabotaged. Teen years were a B, am I right? And when you're the less favourite girl of six kids, eight if you count the dogs, your self-esteem tends to tank. Violet was the first at everything, first to walk, talk, all that crap, according to my parents, but then she became the first to date, the first to get awards, do a show. And hey, it's because she's kick-ass. My sister is the most brilliant woman I know, after my mum. I'm not kidding when I say I look up to her a lot. She's almost effortlessly everything people like, and I was always just a little ray of crap shine. I guess I'm the first of us two on a few things. First to get diagnoses with a learning disability, and first to get arrested. I'm actually sort of proud of that one, but we're not here to talk about that, lol. The first in the family to get what Dad called a stress stutter. I do have a mild stutter, but I can manage fine unless under a lot of duress. So hey, she's not the best at everything, right? We were really close, and I didn't really notice us drifting apart truly until high school, and by then I had my own problems. One being frickin' Daniel Swift, fake name. This sloppy knob was always picking on me. He and his crew made school and community events absolute hell for me since grade school. When we were young, most adults said that it was because he liked me, but by the end of middle school it was real clear the dude hated my guts. He always compared me to my sister, and had to point out how inferior I was. Even when we were small, he would be so confused as to if we're twins. Why is one of you pretty and the other isn't? By middle school, he had a name for me. It's to do with my in-real-life name, so let's say for this, it's Lumpy Lily. Just a name to remind me that I was fat. Looking back, I know I wasn't. Puberty hit me fast and hard, and boom, baby got back. He was relentless, and his friends were too. I told on him once because a teacher found me crying as I was forcing myself to throw up in the bathroom during practice. I don't know how, but he managed to turn it around on me, saying I was bullying him and his friends vouched for him, so I got suspended from the team during the season and had to write an apology letter in detention. He once slapped me and I went to tell, but he denied it saying I punched him in the stomach and he turned on waterworks and his friends said they saw me hit him and call him a loser. My parents were so upset with me and my dad had to leave work to pick me up. He didn't believe me at all that I didn't do these things. He would rant that I'm not the only kid and they need to stop being so much trouble. So I shut down, kept my head down, and didn't bother to say anything. He called me the defective one, the spare, the botched clone, everything he could think of. Some were admittedly clever, but all were cruel. When Daniel picked on me, I would ignore him, and if I couldn't, I just endured it. Senior year, he wasn't around much, and I heard his mum died. It was the first year I was without his constant teasing, and it was the best year of my life. I feel terrible, but I was so glad he wasn't there. 
Even if it was because of something so awful, I myself could never imagine enduring. The loss of a mum. I got into some hobbies, even made a good friend, Sunny, now female 31. Well, you made it past the prologue. Good work. So here's the actual issue. Fast forward to now, I live a state over and have my main job as an educator. I love what I do. It feels good most of the time, but hey, this ain't Disney. Sometimes being a teacher sucks raw rotten eggs in the summer heat to be sure. But I get to be the adult I wish I had in the room when I was young. Sunny lives a city over from me, which in all honesty is a mere 20 minute drive in traffic, so we see each other often. She's easily my best friend. Violet and I are still close, and same with my brothers, but we're all 30 plus now, some with kids and spouses, and full ass lives, so we don't talk much. Violet and I would have calls and sometimes FaceTimes. My sister is incredible. She became a nurse but quickly realised she wanted to be a nurse practitioner, and now she's out there helping people in need by donating most of her time outside of work at the shelter in our hometown. She looks after our parents and makes sure they have all they need. She owns a house, has an Etsy business, a blog, hell, a TikTok. She's kicking ass and I couldn't be prouder. Last year she was all excited because she thought she found the one. She called him James. Every picture of him he's this big ex-military dude with tats and a beard and those douchey big sunglasses some guys never take off to save their lives. You know the ones. No shade if you do that too, but if you also own a truck as well and have a come and take it sticker on it, a teensy bit of shade. Cause James did. What, you think I wasn't going to cyberstalk my only sister's the one? The frick out of here. I stalked the crap out of him, but he had no socials other than a LinkedIn. Former Marine, then contracted himself out before owning his own full-time business consulting. I was happy for my sister because she really was the woman who had everything, but what she wanted was to fall in love and have that chicken flick romance when you kiss and your leg pops and get married, have babies right off into the sunset, get kissed in the rain and all that sappy crap. I get it. And my sleuthing came up with nothing to naysay James, and I wasn't going to yuck her yum on her taste in dudes, because my bias of living in a state with dude bros who love their trucks and shades more than life itself, frick it, she's happy. So this past Easter rolled around and I was talking with Vi about how excited I was to be around her and the boys again, and she mentioned that she was bringing James. I don't remember what I said, but I said something about being excited to finally meet this guy, since Dad and our eldest brother already have, and said he's a stand-up dude. She got quiet and kind of had the tone like, yeah, about that. So I paused to ask what was wrong. She said she needed to talk to me because James is my old crush from school. I was confused because while I was close with my siblings, I never talked about crushes with most of them, and definitely not Violet. It just wasn't what we talked about. I said I don't remember crushing on a James, and that's when she said that he went by his middle name Daniel in school. Now, Daniel's IRL name is pretty common, so I was like, well I don't remember a Daniel I crushed on, but which one do you mean? And we narrowed it down to that soggy twatsicle. There wasn't much to say after that other than I never had a crush on him. She was relieved to hear that. She said she actually didn't realise James and Daniel were one and the same herself until he brought it up on like the fourth date or something, and then she felt bad but by then she was already developing feelings and couldn't bear the thought of hurting me nor walking away from her chance at love. I decided to tell her a bit at Easter and I did pull her aside before he arrived as we all stay the night before over at the parents' house. I told her most of what I've now told you. This guy made my life hell. Violet was devastated and she kept saying, You're sure it's him? And that was years ago, maybe you've got it wrong. To the point that I got frustrated and sort of gave up. Easter was tense, but Daniel did say hi to me like, Long time no see, remember me? And I just said, Oh I do. And kept my distance. From then on it was a dance. Mother's Day, Father's Day, Mum and Dad's anniversary, a brother's birthday, you get it. Good old Daniel is around. By this point, I've told two of my brothers some of what's happening because they had scolded me for being standoffish around him and they assumed I was pissy about Daniel taking my only sister. Once they knew though, they weren't happy. We all got together again for Juneteenth and of course Dandy Daniel was there, but this time Vi had a ring. My mother screamed with excitement, whooping through the restaurant telling any and everybody her baby girl is getting married. When the parents went home, our siblings bar-hopped in the main street in the city to catch parts of the parade. 
Vi pulled me aside and inquired why I was avoiding her, and I just said I'm happy for her if he makes her happy. She's my sister, and I would die for her. It's just complicated that he's my bully from school, and I don't want to be around him. She got quiet and said, well, thank goodness the bridesmaids and the groomsmen won't be interacting a lot, and as maid of honour, I would have minimal contact with him on the actual day. Then she started talking dresses, and I stopped her. I don't think I can be maid of honour. I don't feel comfortable in the same space as this person. Maid of honour usually is a big job and interacts a lot with the couple. She shot back that, well, after, he will be her husband, so am I to avoid him the rest of our natural lives? How? When they have kids? How do I plan to pull that off? She broke down saying I'm ruining everything for my misconceptions about him and making it out that she has to choose between her love and her sister, and it's not fair. I said, whoa, hold on, what misconceptions? That he bullied me? Violet went off. Okay, I tried not to bring this up because I didn't want an argument, but you bullied him, remember? And she went on to say she confronted him about my allegations, and he explained that I had it the wrong way around. Even now in her thirties, he can't admit to pushing me, hitting me, calling me every name he could come up with, and worse, she was hoovering his bullcrap like a buffet. I lost it. I told her before. I told her each time again and again that I didn't do those things. He always spun it around on me, and his friends would lie so it would be my word against theirs, and no one ever believed me except once when he was caught on camera, and even then it was made as retaliation by my bullying of him. She huffed, Okay then, what if he apologises to you for bullying, using air quotes? Maybe it was the sangria, but I just laughed and said, You know what? Fine. You don't have to believe me. It doesn't matter now anyway but I can't be maid of honour. She cried and her brothers came to keep the peace, but I was done with it. When my dad dropped me off at the airport later that day, he said that he hopes I think this through and if my perception of things is more important than family. That's my choice, but when he and mum are gone, all we will have is each other, and this squabble is too much. He asked me to please not make trouble over this. I kissed him goodbye and took my damn flight. Now my sister is still in the group chat acting like I am maid of honour. My older brother is nudging me to just get over myself and not stress Violet out. Then this morning, I'm added to a new chat with a few folks and my sister. She texted us as the wedding party and listed me as the maid of honour. I wanted to call her to remove this, but now I'm second guessing. I'm happy to attend. Hell, I'll bartend, sing, give a speech, anything, but I just don't want to stand up there as if I'm on board with this. Maybe he's changed, and that's swell, but it took years of therapy, lots of love from my friends, and intense amount of support groups, and so much effort to get the somewhat normal life I have. I don't purge anymore, I don't cut anymore, I actually communicate with my partner and my friends. It took so much to get over all that frickin' hurt, and when I'm with my family, I'm labelled as trouble, despite years of not asking for anything, not wanting to rock the boat with them. It feels like I can't be myself back home now, and it sucks. But this extra layer, Daniel, I can't just plaster a fake smile on and grin and bear this like I did so many other things for so many years. I'm already the audible, which hey, someone's gotta be, and I moved to stay to avoid being judged on what scraps I managed to scramble up to make my messy, weird, awesome, amazing life, but I feel like I'm up against the wall. So maybe I am just a selfish little kitten scratching at anyone trying to love me, but there it is. Am I the a-hole? Wow, how about that? Yeah, I mean, until this guy grows up and admits to his mistakes in the past, unfortunately it's going to be his word against hers. And if the family didn't believe her back then, I doubt they're going to believe her now, right? Let's go to some comments. Hey everybody, I was added to this chat by mistake as I already told my sister I will not be her maid of honour because she's marrying my childhood bully who physically assaulted me and got me in trouble for it. Please never contact me again, as I'll no longer be in anyone's life. Block everyone, I got ticked off reading this. Not the a-hole, I'm saying this gently, I don't think your sister is as wonderful as you claim she is. This man traumatised you for years, damaged your mental health, and caused you to develop an eating disorder. He isn't remorseful, and he's still lying about it and gaslighting you via your sister. He hasn't changed. You're being generous to agree to attend the wedding. You've been incredibly understanding so far. You haven't given ultimatums, demanded she leave him, avoided contact, spoken badly about him, or caused any drama. You aren't asking her not to marry him. You're not refusing to go to the wedding. 
you have set a very reasonable, very generous boundary of not being the maid of honour in order to protect the mental health you fought so hard to heal. You are not an oddball, or trouble, or anything else your family calls you. You grew up being led to believe you are less than your sister because of the order of circumstances of your birth, which you have zero control over. Your parents didn't abuse or neglect you in the traditional sense, but training you from birth that your trouble is a form of emotional abuse. And where were they when you were going through the bullying and its aftermath? Aside from when you got suspended, how much did your parents know, and did they support you? Did your sister stand up for you? Maybe she's brilliant, but you are not less so, and she's not a good sister to you. Your family seems really important to you, your sister in particular, and you seem to want to maintain your relationship with them. I don't know that they deserve this from you. They know this man bullied you, and they're welcoming him into the family. They expect you to be fine with this, and then convince you that you're causing problems in the family when you set one reasonable boundary. I would ask for a family meeting, with a plan for what you want to say then calmly lay it out for them. This is what he did. This is the harm it caused. This is what I had to do to heal. My boundary is not being made of honour. If your parents and sister and potentially even your brothers still won't support you, I would walk away. Yeah, wise words, which I tend to agree with. What do you guys think? Okay, Opie makes a quick edit. What in the space balls is going on? I fell asleep and woke up to over a thousand notifications. The F? I really tried to read all the comments, but it's not even 7.30 here, and baby needs her coffee, and I have an international D&D session today. I DM part-time, so I will try start replying after that, but some themes I want to address here as I can, blurry-eyed as I might be. My favourite comment of all time thus far, that I've read, is claiming my story is fake. Nothing special there. Comments like that and trolls are a dime a dozen, but theory was that I use English turns of phrases, but clearly based in the USA. Congrats. You wanted to catch me out, but the explanation is really far more simple than I think you're wanting. Dad is not born here. He's African by descent, but raised across the pond, and met Mum and never left and had us. Sorry it's not as interesting as you wanted, lol. I guess I will have time to name the brothers for this to not get too confusing. I was afraid of that. Here we go. In order of birth, my siblings are John, 42, Jacob, 40, Jonas, 37, Jeremy, 35, and of course Violet, and then myself, Lily, 31. John is the brother leaning on me about sulking it up and just going to the wedding, but that's no big shock as he and my father are usually quite aligned. Very stereotypical eldest children syndrome. Anyway, Dad was the hands-on parent most of the time when Violet and I were younger, because Mum works a job that requires a lot of travel, so he essentially is the boots on the ground with six kids. Please be gentle about it. He may not be perfect, but he had a lot on his plate, and he does his best. By the time Mum would talk to me about getting in trouble at school, I was already shut down and just wouldn't answer her. She had me go to therapy, but I wouldn't talk to the therapist either, so she put me in lots of extracurriculars. I think in her own way, because she didn't get my side of the story, and could get the proverbial blood from a rock, she hoped to keep me busy and well-rounded to keep me out of trouble. Like I said, six kids to manage is a lot. Probably why I don't want kids at the moment, to be honest. After I posted, Jeremy called me to ask if I was alright, and I got a little overwhelmed. I didn't cry, but I think he could hear the stress in my voice. I told him everything about Daniel, and now he's really upset. I know he's already said something to Jonas because he's been texting me to check up on me and to ask about what's going on. As for why my own twin didn't know about my bullying since we'd be in the same classes, we weren't. We were in separate homerooms because we had a lot of unhealthy attachment to one another when we were little, so administration made the call to keep us separate. Plus I mentioned I have a slight stutter. It was a real problem at school because I was an anxious one. I was pulled for speech therapy and the like, a lot. All that to say, at school I saw my sister in passing maybe, but not a lot, and by high school we frankly just ran in different circles. Anyway, baby needs her coffee before Godzilla levels another city. Okay, let's go straight to an update. Post coffee I'm assuming. Sunny is helping me with this since Reddit is more her thing. So here's the last post, it's too much for me to add here, and I made a new posted update because the last post was long. This one will be too, so once again, if that's not your bag, don't read. Or do, whatever. It's your life, lol. 
I just wanted to start by saying thanks to everyone who gave kind or even some unkind advice. It's actually heartening and heartbreaking to know so many of you have gone through this sort of stuff. But okay, holy moly righteous cannoli, what the F. When Sonny suggested I lost here, I figured I would get a couple of comments, but this went crazy. There were so many comments, I'm so sorry if I didn't reply. Unless you were a twat waffle, get therapy. But there were literally hundreds, which as you might imagine is an overwhelming number. To anyone complaining I didn't respond, I mean sorry, but I do have a life and stuff to do away from this app. It's barely been a day and I have side gigs. So let me cover some basis I saw in a lot of comments. No contact isn't really a first option for me. My family isn't perfect, but they're my family. Low contact would be hard, but far more of an option. I've already moved out of my home state and have my family on an information diet concerning a lot of my day-to-day -day life, and that worked mostly until now. I respect that some of you are autonomous enough that you can go no contact, but I'm not like you, I guess. We're a large family, and both parents come from large families. It's just too much admin, and I would be miserable. I love my family, and I can't just shut that off. Some comments suggested Daniel is obsessed with either me or my sister, or both, and that is too much for my brain to take in. The effort that would take is frankly a lot. My hometown is not a town at all, but a city, and a populated one at that. After graduation, a lot of us lost touch with one another, unless we gave an effort to keep ties. Others have said that he might hurt my sister, and I'll only say this, he better frickin' not. Some of you sent links of what is supposed to be his side, but it's literally labelled a crap post, and Sonny traced it to some group making fun of me. Nice to know Daniel isn't alone on being a bully. Weird read, but funny, so thanks for sharing it. And finally, I am in therapy. I've been consistently in therapy since leaving home. I was messed up a lot in the soul and the head when I left, and it took a lot of time, effort, and coping mechanisms to help me sort myself out. I'm no Disney princess, but I am proud of who I am now. And let's get to it. So in order of birth, my siblings are John, Jacob, Jonas, Jeremy, and of course Violet and then myself Lily. Mum will be mum, 63, and Dad will be Dad, 67. I don't know how relevant it is, but Dad is the stepfather technically for John. Don't know how relevant that is, but whatever. John is the brother leaning on me about sucking it up and just going to the wedding. My three other brothers have now heard my side of things since my last post. This morning I got a call from my mum. She and I usually text, so a call is serious. I paused my virtual D&D game and got everyone on an early break. Mum skipped the usual how are you BS and just went for, Lillian, I need the truth from you. What's going on with you and this man? So I told her the truth. He bullied me. I never lied about it. I only ever hit him once when we were kids to get him away from me. His friends lied and backed him up when he would blame things on me. I didn't have time to give her all the details, but I told her the cliff note version. But I knew one of my brothers snitched, and I suspected Jeremy, and I had no way to know what she knows, so I outlined it all. She just asked me if my sister knew, and I told her what happened Juneteenth. She asked me why I didn't say anything, but everyone in my D&D group came back on, so we couldn't talk more and told her I would text her once I was free. After D&D, I texted her and she called again. We talked more. She got upset. Why didn't I say anything? Why did I push her away? She wanted to know the whens, the wheres, the whos, and I just said, don't know, I just didn't want more trouble. And I could hear her either scoff or sob, not sure. She said, I'm sorry, baby, and then asked if I had time to talk tonight, but I'll be honest, this second round telling my mum these things emotionally drained me, so I said I'm free tomorrow, but going to see a movie tonight with friends. She understood. I texted Sunny as we have plans today, and she mentioned to me that my brother Jeremy had reached out to her, asking all sorts of questions, and that we can talk more tonight, but to be warned that my family is asking questions, and she suspects sooner or later my sister will have words for me. Don't know what that means, but we'll enjoy girls' night nonetheless. I don't know what will happen, just that I will fight for my family and love them as hard as I can, but I won't be yielding on this boundary. I love my sister, but the amount of my peace damaged by being near Daniel and dealing with the issues he's brought into my life and that of my family is too much for me to fake through. A commenter suggests I be more bold about my dislike of him, but I don't want to be that sister. What I think I will do is be more matter-of-fact about it. 
Maybe that will make me the a-hole, and I'm okay with being branded as bitter or jealous or whatever. I'm just tired and overwhelmed now, and it's now bleeding into my everyday life and interactions with my circle here, where I live, and I even thought about cutting again. I don't want to be like that, and I refuse to go backwards. I don't know how to end these posts, so I'll end this one with a quote I like, and update if anything happens later. It matters not when someone is born, but what they grow up to be. Signed with love, Trouble. Okay folks, we're moving straight to the next update. Opie first gives a quick recap on everything, and then we're going to pick up here. Recently, my mother asked me for the truth of what her history was, and I told her. I told her everything. I was emotional, but also felt like there was this wall I couldn't get past. It was hard to drag the words out of my mouth on one hand, and on the other, it felt like floodgates had been opened and I couldn't shut up. My mum listened to me and was getting upset to hear about all of this, as she didn't know. After my dad blamed me and didn't believe me the first time, things got really bad. I stopped talking about it, and for a time stopped talking period, so I never told my mum, even when she'd asked, since she was out of town for work at the time. She said she was sorry, and I believe she really meant it. I was so spent and mentally and spiritually drained, and my depression came back full force. I vomited and couldn't get any sleep, and my best friend stayed up most of the night with me, because I said that the self-harming thoughts were surfacing again, and I didn't want to be alone. It just all brought me back to being that kid no one believed, and that no one took the time to care about. That isolated, quiet kid, who used self-harm to feel any sort of control, or feeling, other than this damn pit of loneliness. That kid who when I got essayed in college, not by Daniel, I didn't even bother to report it, or to tell my family, because I simply never expected to be believed. I believed so deeply that I would just be blamed. That's a lot of word vomit. Sorry for the rant. After my talk with mum yesterday and the night from hell Sunny witnessed me go through, Sunny cancelled all her plans and made an elaborate itinerary to keep me busy and distract me from being sucked into my thoughts today. She's a good one, I know. We started off having a lot of fun. We went to live music and brunch, got tickets for a movie later today, hit the museums in the city and enjoyed mimosas. I almost forgot about my crappy situation for a while. We were at lunch when my dad happened. I guess my mum talked to him about everything. He'd called three times, but I just texted, Sorry, really busy at the moment. I'll call back tonight. Everything okay? And it devolved from there. I changed some info for privacy. Dad said, Okay? No, it's not okay. You've upset your mother. Again. You will call back now. I say, How did I upset her? She didn't tell me. And like I said, I'm busy, but we'll call back when I can tonight. Dad says, you need to fix this. Take responsibility for yourself. I say, I don't know what you mean. Dad says, you do. Don't play cheeky. Dad, please just explain. What is it you want? Dad replies, you need to call your mother and stop blaming me for your being a difficult child. You threw me under one frick of a bus. Take responsibility for yourself and stop causing trouble. I said, I never blamed you for anything, so what do you want me to take responsibility for? Dad replies, Oh, so you're playing this game. Okay, cute. I reply, I don't know what you mean by game. I don't know what bus I threw you under. I don't know what you want me to say to mum. I don't know why you're acting this way. Why won't you just be plain and tell me what you want? I never meant to cause any drama. Dad says, I talked to your sister. I know you've been trying to rewrite history and be trouble for Daniel. He's been really trying to build bridges with you, and you're trying to make him out as a bad guy. That's not fair to him or your sister, I tried to stay out of this, but now you're lying to your mother. You need to tell the truth. I say, Okay, Dad, you want the truth? The truth is he bullied me. I avoided him because of that. Dad replies, laughing emoji, You're embarrassing yourself. I say, The truth is also that you never once believed me and never gave me the benefit of any doubt. Mum asked for the truth, and I told her. Dad, Lillian, stop it. This tale you tell yourself wasn't cute then, and it's not now. You're an adult. This childish tantrum you're having is so immature, it's embarrassing. It's hurting the entire family, and your selfishness when Daniel has tried to mend things is nasty. You were raised better. I'm so deeply disappointed in you. I didn't reply to that, mostly because I'd started crying, a lot, and we were in public. So Sonny got me in the car and let me sob. She said my dad is a royal idiot. 
Not her exact words, but I think her exact words go against guidelines or something. I argued with her that he has six kids, a full-time job, and a full plate, and I was the least of my siblings. He's doing his best with what he has. She got angry with me and just yelled, Bull frickin' crap, and took my phone and replied to my dad in the group chat with her number. She said, Hi Mr. Gardener, this is Sunny Willows, and just in case you try to twist this, feel free to reply to my number. Lily is telling the truth. I know because I was there and saw some of it firsthand. Am I a liar? Why don't you give me a call and I'll lay it out for you and you can call me a liar directly. I saw Daniel or James or whatever his name is now slap her, throw things at her, curse her out. She then took screenshots of the whole thing. About an hour ago, my mother sent in the family group chat to please clear our plans for a set time in a few hours as we need to video chat ASAP. And when I looked, Sonny's instincts were correct because Dad deleted his text I transcribed above and just said, Don't you worry, I won't be speaking to you about this anymore. Talk to your mother about it. I'm done. I got upset and tried to call, and he answered with asking me if I'm calling about Daniel, and I just said no. I just hate that I've upset him, but swore to God it was the truth. He said, then you've lied to me, and basically said, if what I'm saying is true, then I've lied by omission all this time, and now trying to paint him as a villain, so he's over it. If he's such a bad father, he won't bother to father me anymore then, since clearly that's what's best for me. Then he hung up. I've been a wreck since. I told Sonny who heard my side of the conversation as it was happening. She called him a manipulative little bee and said she wants to be there for his family video call. I'm glad she'll be there as I don't know what's going to happen, but I know I can't face it alone. I think he basically just disowned me. I know that's not exactly what he said, but how the hell else am I supposed to take it? I'm so nervous I haven't been able to keep anything down. Sorry for the rant, I know this is all over the place. I think I'm just typing this to get it out of my brain for a moment. I just want my family back. I want my daddy back. I want my sister back. And it feels like this godforsaken frick bomb of a call is going to see my family fractured for good. And it's all my fault. All because I couldn't frickin' just grow a pair and fake my way through being maid of honour in some dumb wedding. God, this is so frustrating. Like, none of this is OP's fault. All of this is because the family refuses to believe their own family over some dude who they went to high school with all these years ago. I mean, seriously, how out of touch does this dad have to be if he just refuses to believe when his daughter's being sincere? Like, thank God for Sonny. At least OP's got someone in her corner. Okay, let's go to part two of this story. Hi all. I am really very sorry for losing my head in my last post. I'm a bit embarrassed, which is funny only because this is anonymous, and the only person in real life that knows this is me is Sunny. I was in a bad place when I was typing. I'm doing a smidge better now, and when I started to write this, I was at a brewery, and Sunny was on her way. She had to run some errands, as were some other friends. Sunny gave them the lowdown to come and cheer me up. Actually, I kind of laughed a bit when I hit post because it showed me the published post, but there was a thing on it. Sonny called it a flare, and it said XL, and when I asked her what that meant, she said it meant extra long, and I was like, damn, I'm copying shade from auto mod bots now? Lol. But I guess you're here to hear how the video call went. The short is, not pretty. The long is, long, so per usual. Here's my disclaimer. This will be novel with lots of info, but you get candy if you make it to the end. I'm an educator and not above bribery. Sorry, it's the beer, or at least that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So, I logged onto the Zoom link Mum sent everyone and sat on the couch next to Sunny. She wasn't in view at this point, so it just looked like I was on the couch with my dog. Mum was already logged in and waiting. Dad was logged in too, but his mic and camera were off. I noticed they were logged in separately, immediately, since they usually log in together on one account and sit together on family video chats, unless Mum's work causes her to not be in town. She said she was glad I was logged in first and asked me how I was holding up. I was honest and said, not great, and she just nodded. I asked about her and she smiled and said, not great, and it was my turn to nod. She said she thinks she got an idea of all that happened and apologised for not checking in with me more when I was young. She said since Dad was the consistently home parent, she simply trusted his conclusions and when I refused to speak with her and the therapist, she assumed it was because what was said of me was true and I was just ashamed. She made a point to say, 
That doesn't mean I blame you. I'm the parent I should have pressed. I shrugged and muttered something like, Well, I didn't make it easy, Mum. And she shook her head and said nothing about parenting is supposed to be easy, but she took the easy road and it wasn't fair to me. I was going to respond, but the clock hit the new hour, so everyone else was logging on. My eldest brother John was on with his wife Sarah, Jacob came on with his boyfriend Kyle, Jonas and Jeremy both respectively are on by themselves, and of course Violet comes on with Daniel, they're holding hands, and then myself, Lily, am seemingly on by myself. Mum asked my father if he was there, and he said he was, but kept his camera off. Mum then said, I am gently requesting we all have our cameras on. This tool is for communication over distances, not creating more distance. There was a beat, and Dad turned on his camera with one of those fake backgrounds, but as he moved around and it glitched a bit, it was very clear he was in a hotel room. Honestly, both of my parents looked tired, and we all noticed it, but we just didn't have the balls to ask WTF. Mum started with a smile, thanking everyone for joining for something so last minute, and quickly said, I know usually I call this sort of thing last minute like this because of a death. No one has died. I could see my eldest brother sort of relax a bit, and I can't blame him as we've had a string of deaths of some elder members of the extended family. Mum went on to say, Daniel, I am pleased you could make it, and he said he couldn't stay long as he has an important meeting. Mum's smile didn't falter for a second, and she said this sort of thing might take a little time, and she hopes that whoever he has lined up to meet next is understanding that this here is an important meeting. I know I'm not known to be brief, but I will be fast-forwarding through a lot to keep this shorter than carrying a ring to a volcano. I've been having some really tough discussions with a few of you in this room, she says, and she goes on to say that communication and honesty will be valued here, and asked Violet how aware she was about the situation with me and Daniel. Violet folds her arms immediately and explains that, from what I understand, Lily and Daniel didn't get on well when we were kids, and she hit him once. We're trying to leave it be for the wedding. Mum asks me, Did you hit Daniel ever? I said yes, so she asks why, and I say that if it's the time I got in trouble with my coach, that it was because Daniel called me Lumpy Lily and pushed me hard enough for me to fall. Mum asks Daniel if that's true, and he shrugs and says, Mama, that was over ten years ago. I don't really remember. Mum let silence reign for a moment, and then asked my dad if he remembered anything about it. Dad seemed annoyed and said that he was told by the school that I started a fight and bullied a kid, and there are other students who vouched for Daniel's version. Mum was nodding and listening, and then asked, Does anyone have anything to add about this? And at first, no one said anything, so I just added that of the kids that backed Daniel up, two are now in the wedding party group chat as groomsmen, one being the best man. Mum said, Yes, I know, I talked to Harvey actually earlier today, and she left it there. I know this tactic, as she used it on us kids many times growing up. She dangles that she spoke to someone in the know. Sometimes it's a bluff, and sometimes it's not. But you best fess up, because if it isn't bluffing, she'll nail you to the wall for not coming clean. Harsh, but effective. Guess it works on adults too because Daniel looked at Violet and muttered something and then said that he did remember that he and I sometimes just didn't like each other. He said he didn't know why or where the problem started because his mother was sick at the time and his dad was never home because he was working so much. He then said to me, So sorry Lily if I ever did anything to upset you. Well, crap started to hit the fan around there because Sonny started to say loudly, No, 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 no and scooched next to me so she was visible. Then went her hailstorm, and she was honestly a force. She launched into it. This is a paraphrase from what I remember. She says, I'm sorry, Mama Gardner, but you need to know. Either Daniel's memory is crap, or he's full of it. Daniel bullied Lily for as long as I can remember. He called her Lumpy Lily all the time. And Harvey, please excuse my language, is just as much of a crapstick, so whatever he told you isn't the half of it. Then she turns on Daniel and asks a barrage of questions like, You don't remember in 7th grade when you spat in Lily's hair and called it an accident? Or, You mean to tell me you don't remember pushing her so hard she was bleeding and went to the nurse? Or how about when you asked her why she was the ugly twin? And more. No one interrupted her. Daniel tried a couple of times and she just said, I'm still speaking, and continued relaying a series of specific events. And then she brought something up that even I didn't remember. 
Quote, Violet was there once when he said Lily must have been the twin that didn't get enough air to the brain because Violet is actually smart and Lily's flunked a test. I can't really describe the next 15 or so minutes, but now all the mics are turned on. There's talking over one another, questions everywhere, and Daniel suddenly remembering bits and pieces here and there. It did calm down because after a while, Mum, who was the host, used her dashboard and muted everyone but herself. She was the only calm-looking one in the bunch, and she just asked me if this was all true, and I said it was. She asks if I told my father. I said the first few times yes, but afterwards no, because he never believed me, and I would get grounded somehow for lying. I was crying a bit by this point, because it was all too much, and Sonny was pulling me into her side and rubbing my arm. My father started to say, Well, Sonny never told anyone about this, and my mum muted him again and just said, Shut the F up, Peter, and then asked Violet if it's true she saw this event or any others. Violet was crying too now, and she was not holding Daniel's hand anymore, and mumbled that she didn't remember that. Sonny asked her if she didn't remember or didn't want to. Violet got very defensive and said she loves me and wouldn't let someone hurt me if she really knew they were hurting me. Sonny said, Oh, so I guess you never once noticed her cutting herself then, even though we shared a room and a bathroom. Mum just went, You're cutting yourself? And I don't know what word salad I tossed, but I basically said I used to but worked through it in therapy and haven't for years now. Mum started to cry, but she was keeping it together, and just asked who else knew. Jeremy meekly said he suspected something, but didn't know what I was doing to myself. Dad started to interrupt, telling Jeremy that of course he didn't know. How could he if I never said anything, and rolled out his Lily lies by omission speech before saying to John that he's the eldest, and was responsible for the youngest, so what's his excuse here? That there are six kids and Dad worked full time, true, and John was often put in charge of us kids, also true, even after he was moved out and married. But John never told Dad anything about this, and it's unfair to spring this on them to paint them as the bad guys. So John, how did you not know? And if you knew, why didn't you tell your mother, or I? John was ticked, and even though Sarah was trying to calm him down, he said that I never mentioned any of this to him, and never told him about hurting myself. Well, his exact words were that he didn't know I was trying to take the coward's way out and end myself. I couldn't take it anymore and just got off the couch to go into the bathroom and cry. So the rest is what Sonny told me. But note, please, we sometimes speak two other languages and Sonny doesn't speak either, so some she couldn't really relay to me. They see me leave sobbing and can hear me leave the room. Sonny is glaring at them, trying to transfer all her rage into concentrated energy to somehow make Daniel or my father spontaneously combust so she can hoover their ashes, dump them in a toilet and crap on them. Those were her words, not mine. The whole Zoom room went quiet and the three youngest brothers got on John for taking the tone with me and demonising mental health struggles. Sonny, because I did say I didn't care how much she told them, disclosed that I cut myself all through high school got so depressed that when I slept over her place, I would sometimes lie and say I've eaten when I hadn't to skip dinner, rather than purge, and then I would cry myself to sleep. She named all of Daniel's friends who lied for him. Sarah suggested we all take a break since everyone is so upset, but Jonas was calm and said the only people who are getting upset here have the right to, because either they were harmed by all this, or did the harm. John told him to shut up in my father's native language, and Jonas said something back, but Sonny didn't know the language, but from what I can guess, he probably told John to make him. Dad started ranting and scolding in his native language, and my brothers all shut up, and my mum asked Daniel to give them the room and go to his ever-so-important meeting, but he refused at first, saying he was in this family now too, to which my mum replied, Don't push your incredible luck, babes, and log the F off. Violet asked if she should stay on, and mum told her no, as she should sit down with her man and have a discussion, and that mum will call her later. Violet didn't argue, but she made a show of crying and just logged off. Mum asked Sonny if I was okay, and so she got up and checked on me and came back to them chatting about signs they might have missed. Sonny reported that I was alright and staying with her for a while. Mum thanked her and said to the others that she wants to be made crystal clear. No one is blameless here. John complained that Violet isn't getting this speech. Why did Mum not start scolding them all when Violet is the one who brought Daniel home? Mum said she'll be dealing with that talk privately, that Violet is grown and now can make her own choices fully informed. 
She asked Sonny to have me call when I'm ready and to please keep an eye on me. Sonny told me that Mum asked Dad to stay on the line so they could talk, and John slammed his computer closed to log out, and the others simply looked sad. Sonny relayed all this to me once I'd showered, and she said to not forget to get dressed and screw the movie. I invited our friend group out to our favourite bar. Let's get the F out of here. I said that I needed to be alone for about an hour to think, and she said she understood, but she doesn't want me alone right now because she's worried after all that crap storm, so we compromised that she would drop me off at the bar as we're regulars and know the whole staff, and I can sit and think alone, but in public for the 45-ish minutes the errand will take her. I wrote most of this update there, but it turns out I didn't have to think very long at all. Violet had texted and asked if we could talk, and I said not right now, and cited that it's girls' night, so I'm out with Sonny and some friends. She responded quickly and asked if they're all calling her a bad person, and I asked if she felt that way. I wasn't trying to shame her, I was genuinely curious. She just said she feels ganged up on, asked me how much Sonny told me, and I said she told me everything. She asked when we could talk, just me and her, and I said tomorrow, which is today. Then I spent a lot of the night drinking with my friends, who did cheer me up a bit. I was pretty sourced by the time I called my mum. She asked me if I was drunk, and I admitted it like, well yeah, I am 31 mum, and she didn't say anything much about it. She said she's at a loss and doesn't know what to do, and doesn't know what will help her children in this. She's afraid to make things worse, so what do I wish she would do right now, or going forward? I just said that she listened to me and that I know it ended in a sort of circus and maybe we don't need a full peanut gallery next time, but it made me happy that she listened to me. She was quiet and asked me if I felt like she didn't listen before, and I said she worked a lot, and that's her job so I get it, but sometimes, no. I didn't feel like she was open to listening to me at all. That made her cry, and she kept saying, I'm so sorry baby, and I started to cry too, so I quickly said I love her and will always love her and she's my mum but I'm not wanting to start up again, so let's call it a night. So we ended the call. She did mention that if Vi hasn't already, she'll be reaching out to me, and said, I want you both to listen to one another fully, and really talk about this, and whatever choices you both make, you can make informed ones. I'll transcribe some of what I can about Violet's call this morning on my account, and link it here for you, as I don't want to clog this sub up with any more trauma dumps indefinitely. Besides, Sunny, in all her ridded wisdom, found subs that are literally spaces for that, lol, so thanks for your patience with me and all this bullcrap, but if you're too fatigued by this point, I don't blame you, so the overview is, it didn't go well. And what kind of teacher would I be if I wasn't true to my word? Here's your candy. Opie adds, Thanks for the kind words. Some of you really are incredible support. Some comments really made me cry. Some made me think. I see my therapist at lunch. I suspect we'll use the full time. I won't bullcrap you. I don't feel better right now. John is on a warpath. Da is ignoring me. And others are just apologizing. But they're just sorrying through it and seem to feel really sad. My family feels fractured, which is what I was trying to avoid. But I don't know how much longer I would have been able to bear it all alone in secret. I should feel good, right? Like a weight has been lifted or whatever. Instead, I feel like I traded one weight for another. I hate hearing my mum cry. It breaks me into pieces. I hate feeling like my dad hates me. I hate that my sister blames me for all of this. I hate it all so much, and it's dawning on me that there's no path back to where things used to be. I know logically that this is a good thing, or will be eventually, but right now, I'm not ruled by logic. Sorry for the depressing ending, but I guess, say la vie. That's life. Alright, let's go to the sister v sister call. If you're here, you want to know the nitty gritty of the call I had the morning after the Zoom call from Hades with my family, so here it is. I translated some of this because we sometimes switch in the languages my father speaks with his family, so some might sound a bit stilted and weird. I'm no linguist, but I did record it. I don't know what I wanted to come of that, but Sonny and some of you convinced me better safe than sorry. I hate that I can't trust my twin, but I frankly don't. On to it. Violet called right on time at 6am. She had work, and were I not to take time off, I would too. I never told my family I was taking time off. I didn't want to further guilt anyone or make them feel blamed for my current state. We small talked a bit. She saw our niece the other day. My home state has lovely weather right now, anything and everything to avoid the elephant. Then she said, Well, yesterday sucked. I laughed and said, Freck, it was the worst, but maybe for the best. She says, You really think so? Me. 
No, or I don't know. Not sure about it, really. She replies, You're not the only one getting blowback on this. I say, I don't know how you want me to respond to that. Sister says, That's what you're giving me right now. I say, I tried to tell you privately, remember that? So, you decide embarrassment is better? I didn't call a family meeting. She says, You never told me. I say, Bullcrap, I did, more than once. Whatever you're about to say, you and I both know I tried. She said, The cutting, you never told me. I say, Vi, I didn't even try to hide it from you. She says, That's not the same thing. Me. Okay, so what do you want from me right now? What do you want me to say? She says, A sorry would be nice. I say, You first, then. For what? I went on what I knew, what I was told. I never assumed anything. I reply, Are you really saying this right now? Do you even believe yourself? Sister says, my wedding might be off now because you needed what? What did you want from this? I say, I don't know. You don't know? So my relationship with Daniel and mum, by the way, casualties because you don't know? Me, crying. I wanted to not be the troubled one for five seconds, okay? I wanted the truth to come out. I wanted you to believe me. Sister says, I'll get off it. I get it. I'm the bad guy like you made dad the bad guy, and now they're divorcing. Is that what you wanted? What do you mean they're divorcing? Check our chat. Dad's not even home. I say, that's not my fault. She says, nothing ever is now, is it? I say, that isn't fair. And we fight a lot, and I admit to saying some mean things just as much as she did, but then I ask her, did you know? She says, Daniel told me. I say, when? When he got home, but he's not who he was. We were kids, Lily. She calls me a dumb nickname only she uses when she's upset. I reply, I was a kid too. How does he get a pass for lying so much, and especially to you, and making it look like he's taking moral high ground by burying a frickin' hatchet he welded? She says, it's effed up. It's also effed up now. I told him, and I said he was a dick for lying, and for what he did. But his mum was sick. It wasn't personal. I say, so what am I supposed to do? Well, he's offered to apologise. Would that help, do you think? I don't respond, so she asks again, and I don't answer that time either. She says, would it help if I apologised? Would you mean it? What do you mean would I mean it? For F's sake. Vi, I'm tired. I don't want to fight. I'm all out of fight. I'm full up to here with fights. I can't defend my position anymore. I can't repeat the same crap over and over, and you not hear me. I'm done trying to convince you or anyone. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But I can't do this anymore. I'm so damn tired. And I break down. She stays on the line a while, and then just hangs up. I've pulled myself together enough to make Sunny breakfast and see her off to work, so it's just me and the dog. So I think I'll find a place with a patio and take my dog out for a spell, and just take up some sunshine. Edit, Vi texted me just now, the below. Quote, Listen, I'm sorry. This is all just too much. It's like I don't know you anymore. You hid a lot from me, and I'm your twin. I should know everything there is to know about you, and you should know the same about me. When did this happen to us where we don't share anymore? Kay, I think I need some space from you. I'm sorry for hurting you. I really am, Lil. But this is frickin' with my sanity, and I just can't deal with you and take care of myself and take care of the people I need to take care of. I'll unblock you in a couple of weeks. I love you lots. Take care of yourself. Now for the final update so far. Well, ain't today the day that keeps on giving. I got out of therapy feeling okay. Not good, certainly not great, and maybe not even better, or maybe it is. I don't know anymore. I'm glad I went because I really was just going to cancel and lay back down on Sunny's couch and hug my dog until I could sleep, but it turns out I needed to talk things out. I preempted a lot by sending my therapist to this entire account link, and I guess she's a fast reader. We sat down and talked it out, and she helped me make some really hard choices. I'm going low contact with Dad and John specifically. How long is, to be honest, but the family group chat has been taken over by their dick measuring contest and trying to figure out who is more to blame. It was so bad that Jonas made another chat specifically without them and Violet so we can resume sending meaningless memes and such. My therapist helped me craft my texts to both of them. It basically said that I understand this is hard for them, but it's been hard on me too. I told John that I do not blame him for not knowing what he didn't know, 
and that I was sorry Dad is trying to shift blame on him, but that does not excuse blaming me, and until he's able to see the situation for what it is, it's best I go low contact. I want to keep contact for the sake of his kids who I adore and would die for, and that I care about him and as I'm getting therapy. I hope he will too. I told Dad that John is not at fault. John is not my parent. I told Dad that now when I have negative thoughts, it's in his voice. His choice to say he won't be my dad may have been an empty threat in his mind, but the impact of that was massive. I need space away from him. I don't know for how long, but I can't find a healthy balance with him right now, and the way he's treated me really hurts. I had no time to even block him. Dad shot back at me and asked if this is my precious daughter talking or if I'm parroting my mum. I don't know what that means, but I can make a guess. I said no, it's Lily, a person he really never got to know. He said he won't accept that and that I'm punishing him for not being close to me by not allowing him the chance to be close to me and shutting him out. He started to make demands. We call once a week, I visit more often, things like that. I said no. He said then he'll visit me. I said no. He said, you can't tell me what to do, that's not how that works. I said he won't be welcomed and if he can't take low contact for a time then I will go no contact. This is my boundary and a hill I will die on, so he should think before he makes a decision. He called me callous and uncaring and hasn't replied anything else, so I blocked him for now. I did get to chat briefly with Jonas. He was crying a lot and saying he was sorry. He said he was wrapped up in his own drama and didn't dig deeper to find out what was going on with me and now he feels like a worthless brother. I told him he isn't worthless, he's my big brother and I'd love him to death. Now that everything is out in the open, we can confront it head on, one small step at a time. He then said, you're not mad at me? And I said I was before for a long time, but I had lumped him in with everyone. There was a time I was mad at the world, I don't miss the person that caused me to become. He said from now on he'll try to do better and he was sorry about dad's attitude. I'm glad I was able to talk to him. Jeremy is another story. He's just gone silent. No one has heard from him yet. If I know him the way I think I do, he's balling it all up inside and beating himself up. Out of my brothers, he's the deep feeler, and the one I'm closest to. He's protective, somewhat overly so. I would hazard a guess that he isn't very okay right now. Mum texted that she'll check up on him. I did reply and asked how she is, and she told me now is not the time to be concerned about her. It's time she be a mother so she'll see after her children. We all chimed in to say that she's actually amazing in her own way, and this alone didn't make her a bad mother. She only said that, nevertheless, she has making up to do, and hasn't responded from there either. I wish I could say that I felt things, but I'm honestly so numb right now. I think I've cried as much as one human can, and the urge to cut was really loud in my head. Past tense. That wave passed finally, and I took a deep breath like I was holding one in for days. My therapist is really on board with me using Reddit. She says she likes how expressive I am when it's pretty anonymous, and maybe that's a way I can let things out. Guess I'm here to stay. She gave me homework on that front. Apparently there are subs for the collective crap storms that have become my life. I can post to there or post right here just on my account. So frick it, I guess. Lastly, I am considering a leave of absence from work. I love what I do, but I really need time to process before I throw myself at a room of tiny humans with big feelings. I always try to show up and bring my A game for my kids, but right now, I'm a D game at best and a flunker at worst. I do have a lot of PTO and I might use a chunk. Travel, update my home, go on weird misadventures with the dog, I don't know, haven't decided yet. If you're still reading, thanks for going on a sliver of my old journey with me. For everyone who sent me sweet messages, sorry for not responding to all, but it's a lot, and I'm still just so tired. I know the tiredness will give way to the grief again. I expect to cycle through some extremes for a while. I know not everyone is her biggest fans, but my mum has really been stepping up. She's paying for my therapy now, and has joined Facebook, which for her, trust me, is a big deal, just to add all of us. She said she's going to therapy soon, starts next week, and offered to delve into savings if any of my siblings wish to start, and she'll pay for the first three months for any of us, but for me, she says a year. It's a huge financial relief, and I'm so grateful, because now I can take up the emergency session option that wasn't covered by insurance, and don't have to deal with the out-of-pocket bills for a while. I'm going to work on my homework. I'm sitting in a pub I like in my city watching the rain, and waiting for a late lunch date with another bestie. I guess I have to come up with a name for her eventually. 
Not now, though. I will try to end these depressing rants with a positive quote or thought from now on. This quote is actually from Sunny in response to a comment we read somewhere in my posts where someone said something about the axe forgetting but the tree remembers. Sunny said, Funny thing about trees, though. Their roots are deep and they can heal and so can you. Okay, guys, and that's the end of that story for now. Wow, what an epic. I'll keep an eye out for any future updates, but geez, plenty to think about with that one. But I'm going to pass it over to you guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this one in the comments. Let me know. I do read them. Alrighty, well that's it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed that story. Thanks for making it to the end, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good day. Cheers.